Breaking just this hour, a D.C. appeals court has ruled that the United States can continue to deport migrant families using a Trump-era COVID policy. That policy is called Title 42, a CDC authority implemented by the Trump administration to deport migrant families seeking asylum to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Now, a judge had ruled earlier this month that the White House didn't have that authority to keep using Title 42 to expel migrants. And that would have been effective today, except that the court just passed this new order. The ruling comes on the heels of a call this week in which the Department of Homeland Security discussed what would have been or what would have happened had the restrictions been lifted. NBC's Julia Ainsley reporting that Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas asked whether the department was prepared for a worst-case scenario, 350 to 400,000 migrants crossing the border next month. That would have been double the 21-year record set just back in July when more than 200,000 migrants crossed. The ruling in place while a lawsuit challenging the process goes forward. International aid agency Oxfam reports that if Title 42 does stay in place, it could do serious harm to the global refugee system. Another blow to Haitian migrants trying to escape the social, political, and economic turmoil in their country. They now have very few places to turn. Mexico is now turning Haitian refugees away as well. Officials sent 70 migrants back to Haiti yesterday on what they called an assisted voluntary return flight. They say it's the first group being sent back, part of an, agree an agreement between Mexico and Haiti's governments. Just days ago, the U.S. government cleared a border camp in Del Rio, Texas, of thousands of Haitian migrants. As of Monday, the U.S. had sent back 4,000 of them, they tell us, according to the State Department. Today, a look at the situation that migrants face once they actually get back to Haiti. In Port-au-Prince, here's NBC's Jacob Soboroff. Shep, today here in Port-au-Prince, those U.S. expulsion flights with migrants coming from Texas continue to land at the airport as well as at another airport here in country as well. They're about to approach the total of 6,000 migrants deported over the course of just the last 10 days or so. And just this morning, the U.N. issued a call to the United States and other nations sending Haitians back to this country. And I want to be precise here. They say they call on those nations to refrain from expelling Haitians without proper assessment of their individual protection needs. And that echoes what we heard at the airport yesterday from Giuseppe Laprete, the chief of mission for the United Nations for migration issues here on the ground in Haiti. Many of these migrants are being brought back to a country they haven't been to for years, some as many as a decade, having lived in Brazil, in Chile, and other nations working. And then during COVID, that work dried up, those visas dried up, and they set off to the United States, hoping to declare asylum when they weren't able to get in. Of course, the United States started sending many of them back here to Haiti, and in effect, they've become stateless individuals with children born in other nations. The question is now, what becomes of those people on the ground here in Haiti? Many of them we talked with yesterday said that they would consider coming back to the United States, attempting a journey as well. There are reports here on the ground that migration outbound by boat is starting to pick up. We're going to continue to travel this country in order to see the situation on the ground. But the reality here in Port-au-Prince, which is a crime-riddled city, one in which the president of this nation was assassinated just over the course uh, of the recent past, uh, is it is a very tenuous situation on the ground for migrants. It's a politically tenuous situation for the Biden administration back at home. And most, uh, most importantly, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty about the future. Shep?